Hey guys, this is Eric from Invensys, and I welcome you to our YouTube channel. In today's session, we will understand the Pareto diagram in detail. Let us now discuss the agenda. This session is broken down into four sections. Firstly, we will discuss a Pareto diagram and why we need it. Then, we will understand the difference between histogram and Pareto chart. We will also talk about the 80-20 rule of the Pareto diagram. And conclude the session by understanding how to construct a Pareto diagram. I hope the agenda is clear. If you like this video, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, to learn more about project management and its practices, check out Invensys Learning's Project Management Certification Training on Prints 2, CAPM, Project Management Fundamentals, PO, and MSP. All of the necessary information is given in the description box below. We will begin this session by understanding a Pareto chart and why we need it. A Pareto chart is a unique type of bar chart. Frequency counts arrange the bars in a Pareto chart from highest to lowest. These charts are frequently used to determine which areas of process improvement to prioritize first. Quality tools have been the focus of our attention in recent months to reinforce their value within the quality improvement framework. We've covered root cause analysis, RCA, thought maps, and check sheets as we begin our highlights of the seven quality tools. If you recall, these seven fundamental management tools were developed by Kaoru Ishikawa, who felt that adopting one or more of these seven basic tools could address 90% of company problems. Next, we look at another tool of the seven, the Pareto chart. As previously stated, Pareto charts provide the ordered frequency counts of values for the various levels of a category or nominal variable. The charts follow the 80-20 guideline. According to this guideline, about 80% of issues result from 20% of the causes. This concept is also known as the vital few and trivial many rule. Again, the notion is that you may concentrate on a few critical root causes of the problem while ignoring the numerous insignificant ones. Given a group of recurrent difficulties, it is usual for a few problems to arise more frequently than the rest of the problems combined. A Pareto analysis may be used to examine this unequal distribution of occurrences and distinguish the vital few from the trivial many. The basic Pareto chart is intended to compare the frequency of occurrences based on issue categories. The measured data, bars, are organized into categories and displayed against the matching frequency in the figure below. The categories, or bars, are shown in descending order. The totals are visible within the bars and are simple to read and comprehend. A line graphic is also used to establish cumulative percentages across the graph. As the category frequency falls from highest to lowest, the cumulative proportion approaches 100%. The bar lengths signify frequency or cost, time or money, and are organized with the longest on the left and the shortest on the right. As a result, the chart indicates which scenarios are more important. This cause analysis technique is one of the seven fundamental quality tools. Now, we will understand the difference between histogram and Pareto chart. A variety of charts are used to evaluate and analyze quality results inside a project. For example, the histogram and Pareto charts are similar and sometimes mistaken charts. A histogram is a type of bar chart that depicts a variable distribution. Each property or feature is represented as a column in a histogram, and the frequency with which each attribute or characteristic occurs is shown as the height of the column. As previously stated, a Pareto chart is a form of the histogram that classifies causes or concerns based on their total effect. A Pareto chart aids in prioritizing remedial measures by displaying the issues having the greatest impact in order. The Pareto chart also contains an arc representing the cause's cumulative percentage. A histogram can be used to indicate the number of students who scored between a given range of scores, such as 0 to 20%, 20% to 40%, and so on. A Pareto chart might be employed to investigate the root reasons for consumer discontent. The reasons would be prioritized based on their frequency of occurrence, allowing the team to focus on the issues that have the greatest influence on customer satisfaction. Moving on, we will talk about the 80-20 rule of the Pareto diagram. The 80-20 rule that is also called as the Pareto principle or the law of the vital few and trivial many argues that given many events, around 80% of the effects are caused by 20% of the causes. In business, one purpose of the 80-20 rule is to identify and prioritize inputs that can be the most productive. So, for example, after managers determine the variables crucial to their company's performance, they should devote the greatest attention to those factors. In his garden in the 19th century, Vilfredo Pareto discovered that 20% of the pea pods contained 80% of the peas. Pareto was also an economist, and the finding of the pea pod got him thinking. In 1896, 
he produced a report revealing that around 80% of land in Italy was held by 20% of the people. Later, Joseph M. Duran discovered Pareto's work and realized its applicability to quality management difficulties. As an engineer, he had discovered that a tiny number of flaws created the majority of problems. The pattern was dubbed the Pareto Principle by him. Since then, the phrase refers to any phenomena in which a tiny fraction of the components account for a high percentage of the effect. Although the 80-20 to 20 axiom is commonly employed in business and economics, the principle may be applied to any industry, including wealth distribution, personal finance, spending habits, and even infidelity in personal relationships. The 80-20 to 20 rule may be considered a simple cause and effect relationship, outcomes, outputs, account for 80% of the total, with 20% of the causes accounting for the other 20%. Inputs. The rule is frequently used to demonstrate that 20% of a company's revenue is generated by 20% of its customers. When seen in this light, it may be profitable for a firm to focus on the 20% of clients who account for 80% of revenue and market directly to them, both to keep existing clients and recruit new clients with comparable qualities. The 80-20 to 20 rule recognizes an entity's finest assets and utilizes them efficiently to achieve maximum value. For example, a student should determine which portions of a textbook would provide the greatest value for an upcoming exam and prioritize those. However, this does not indicate that the learner should disregard the rest of the material. The 80-20 to 20 rule is a guideline, not a hard and fast mathematical rule. It is a coincidence that 80% and 20% equal 100% under the rule. Because inputs and outputs are essentially different units, the percentage of inputs and outputs does not equal 100%. The 80 to 20 rule is frequently misapplied. Sometimes the mistake is the consequence of a logical error, such as the belief that if 20% of the inputs are the most essential, the remaining 80% must be unimportant. At times, the mistake is caused by the coincidence of 100% sum. Salespeople's performance outcomes across various organizations have shown success by adopting the 80 to 20 rule. Furthermore, external consultants that employ Six Sigma and other management methodologies have successfully used the 80 to 20 approach in their operations. In the last part of today's session, we will learn to construct a Pareto diagram. Like other analytical tools, a successful Pareto diagram begins with factual data. The data required in this scenario is any measure of quality, stratified by the numerous categories that contribute to the total effect. The quality metric might be anything that the team feels would quantify the negative impact of the issue at hand. For example, cost, time, amount of errors or failures, percentage of consumers voicing an opinion, and so on are common measures. The measure, for example, cost, must be the same for all participants in the analysis. Pareto analysis is a ranked and measured comparison. It is impossible to rank by multiple metrics on the same Pareto table or diagram. This would be comparing apples to oranges. Before you begin collecting data, take the time to identify all prospective contributors. Otherwise, you may wind up with things labeled miscellaneous or unclassified. When one of the essential few is labeled miscellaneous, it is difficult to focus your team's efforts. The list of contributors to the impact can be derived from various sources, including group brainstorming sessions, cause and effect diagrams, process flow diagrams, and data itself. Sometimes the data you need is already in financial systems, routine management reports, or individual employee files. If the data does not exist, you and your team should devise a method to obtain it. Whatever method you use to generate the raw data for your Pareto analysis, your data must meet the following criteria to be successful. Make decisions based on facts rather than opinions. Use the same metric for all contributions and the same assumptions and computations. Keep in mind that Pareto analysis is a technique for comparing two things. It is also worth noting that consistency is more crucial than perfect precision in figures. It doesn't matter if the assumptions and cost estimates are, say, 10% conservative across the board, as long as they are consistent across all categories, the comparisons will still return the proper vital few. Make certain that your data accurately reflects the real conditions and scenarios in the process. Avoid making problematic assumptions or employing controversial procedures. Keep in mind that you're using Pareto analysis to help you make a decision. People will not support your team's decision if they do not believe the data. In the first step, you should add up the data on the effect of each contributor and add them together to get the total. In the second step, rearrange the contributors from largest to smallest. In the third step, calculate the cumulative percentage of the total. The cumulative percentage of total through the fifth contributor, for example, 
is the sum of the impacts of the first five in rank order, divided by the total and multiplied by 100. The resultant table is referred to as the Pareto table. Then, in the fourth step you draw and label the vertical axes on the left and right and the horizontal axis. Mark the axis from zero to the total or slightly beyond. Fill in the blanks with a caption that describes the metric being used. As many divisions as there are contributions, divide the axis. Also, list the donors in order of importance, from largest to smallest, left to right. You can also give them a caption to describe them. If the names of the contributors are lengthy, designate the axis A, B, C, and so on, and offer a separate key. Label the axis from 0 to 100%. Line up the total on the left axis with 100%. Step 5 You must draw bars to show the extent of each contributor's influence. The height of the bars represents the size of its contribution as measured along the left axis. In the sixth step, you should create a line graph to show the cumulative percentage of the total. The points depicted correspond to the cumulative percentage measured on the right axis. Arrange the points such that they are above the right-hand edge of the bars. The first rank contributor's cumulative percentage of total points should be equal to the height of the first bar. If not, you have committed a mistake. The seventh step you should examine the diagram. On the cumulative percentage graph, look for a breakpoint. In the final step, you write the title of the chart. Label the essential few and useful many, and then display the vital few's cumulative percentage contributions. With this, we come to the end of today's session on Pareto diagrams. If this has spiked your interest and you want to know more about project management, I recommend you to opt for PMP certification training and clear the exam. At Invensys Learning, we provide various PMP certifications that will pave the way for your career in project management. We are accredited by respective governing bodies or courses in line with their guidelines for each of these certifications. Post-enrollment, you will get lifetime access to a personalized learning management system. LMS has all the class recordings, live class, webinar links along with assignments and case studies to practice. All classes are live instructor-led delivered by trainers with rich domain experience. Thank you guys. See you in the next session.